Hi RuneScape, Wilmiset here with a new video and how is everyone doing? The desire to scale up the RuneScape world has been around since the introduction of the Resizable mode in 2008. Before then, the game was mostly locked to a bird's eye perspective, where you had to wrestle with the camera to get a good look into the distance. And if you succeeded, all you would see was an empty black void. But it was a simpler time back then, and that worked for a lot of people. It wasn't a case of, oh, a black loading zone, how original. It was a case of, I wonder what mysteries lie beyond. It was a time when it was fun to explore and see what challenges awaited around every corner. When Jagex decided to graphically update the entire game, they ditched the black void with a more aesthetically fitting grey fog. And, depending on your settings in the brand new resizable mode, this barrier could be much further out than it was before, letting you see much more of the world at once. But the game hadn't been designed to be seen at this scale. So now, mysterious islands in the sea turned out to be just a stone's throw away. Areas that had been strategically placed just out of sight in dungeons to save on memory in RuneScape's development were now visible. And you could weirdly see places that were meant to be on the other side of the world in the corner of your vision. Even in Lumbridge, you could see the grassy greens at the same time as the barren desert across the border. What a weird experience it must have been to be hit with all of these things at once. It's kind of like in the ending scene of The Mist where, <laughs> spoilers, the mist is lifted and it turns out that what we thought was covered by the mist was completely different to reality. Great scene by the way, you should totally go check that movie out. The main thing to take away from this change is that RuneScape felt a lot smaller than we'd thought about. The game hadn't actually become smaller, of course, but when you can see just how close these different areas are, you feel it a lot more. If you could only see the sheer cliff of one side of a mountain, it feels bigger than when you can see it all at once. Heck, Dragon Slayer has a large section about piecing together a map to navigate to the lost island of Crandor, when it's only like 20 paces off the coast of Remington. <laughs> I could pole vault that with a big enough stick. Things only got worse with the introduction of NXT in 2016 and an even greater drawing distance. The world felt small when you could see two towns next to each other, but now you could see entire regions at once with the right settings. Areas which had been carefully hidden away by game chunks were now completely visible, further introducing rare cases of stuff being awkwardly close to each other. The Cornelian family blissfully ignore the raging no more happening a few paces southwest of their home, and their would-be adventurer son complains there's nothing going on in the world. <laughs> Although I suppose it's kind of realistic for the rich people to ignore the plight of everyone around them, so maybe we can chalk that one off, but what about Yanil and Gutanonth being right on top of each other? And look just how close Tusca was to crash landing directly on the bandit camp. I can't be the only one who thinks that might have been a fun update if Tusca was a few spaces to the east. Jagex has tried to mitigate this issue over time. Shortly after the NXT update, they put invisible walls on all bodies of water to make it look like the oceans and seas stretched on forever, even if there was an island five spaces behind it. More recent areas have been designed bigger to feel more size accurate, but this also leads to making the older areas feel smaller, which is especially noticeable with Manor Farm being the same size as Ardoin. When White Wolf Mountain was updated to look like an actual mountain, all the other rocks in the game definitely had size envy. But it's not just the render distance that makes the world feel smaller these days. As the game has grown, more and more teleports and travel methods have been added. If you need to go somewhere now, you'll just make use of whatever method gets you there basically instantly. When was the last time you needed to go somewhere and actually walked all the way? Compare this to Classic, when there was a total of <laughs> zero teleports. No, really. Teleports didn't exist until five months into the game's existence. Can you imagine that? Not to mention that we didn't even have running back then, just walking. Going from one city to another could take several minutes and you'd better be prepared for any challenges you meet on the road. Highwaymen were a serious threat back then, if you can believe it. And don't get me started on the Dark Wizards by Varrock. You thought they were bad in RuneScape too? Just imagine the PTSD all RuneScape classic players have from stepping one space too close to them. May 2001 saw the skills Good Magic and Evil Magic merged into, drum rolls, magic. This is where we got our teleports to Varrock, Lumbridge and Falador, with new spells being added for new cities as time went on. February 2002 saw the first teleportation jewelry with the charged Dragonstone amulet, which you might know better as the Amulet of Glory. This took you to other early RuneScape areas without already established teleports, such as Edgeville, Drainer Village and Musa Point. Now, 
Keep in mind, these methods were still scarce and demand for them was high. It's not like teleports was released and every player was doing it by the end of the week. Teleportation runes were hard to come by in large quantities as runecrafting did not exist yet, and the glory was a best-in-slot item that was hard to come by, so your average Joe didn't have much chance of getting their hands on one. You'll notice a trend with the RuneScape Classics teleports, and it's that they're very much a luxury and not something you'll use freely. Other fast travel methods that were added, like the spirit trees, required you to go to one of them before traveling to another. Since there weren't any fast ways to get directly to a spirit tree, that was still a good chunk of travel time. Same principle for the wilderness stick in Ardoin. Sure, you could go straight to the deep wilderness from there, but it was still tucked away in the back of the town. Getting around the map was getting easier, but you were still traveling by foot most of the time. New methods of transport also started being released as quest rewards, which ensured you'd only start using it after you'd explored the relevant areas beforehand. Now, keep in mind, this was still before running was added. When was that? Huh, I'm glad you asked. March 2004 in RuneScape 2, as a new perk for the agility skill. Originally, agility just gave you nifty shortcuts around the world. But now it helped you run, letting you regenerate your energy faster and making sure you can run longer and more often, cutting down on travel time between those pesky areas with no good teleports. And this just kept building up and building up. More teleportation jewelry, more spell books with their own teleport spells, more quest locked teleports. Just imagine getting around the world before fairy rings were a thing, and more niche teleports like canoes. It was still all part of the core philosophy, where fast travel was a luxury meant for late game players. And every new account would have to walk around and explore as these methods slowly became more viable. The world would only feel tiny once it experienced how big it really was. It's also worth mentioning that not everyone was happy with some of the changes being made. When the home teleport was released in 2006, a free, 10 second long, once per 30 minutes way to get to Lumbridge, it sparked a fair amount of controversy since it felt like a get out of jail free card to any player who had wandered somewhere unfamiliar or even ended up somewhere dangerous. Never again would you have to find your own way back, you'd just return to the most familiar place in the game and get on with your day. Also, why even bother casting teleport to Lumbridge if you could do it for free and save the runes? Players worried about the predecessor it would set. Well, six years later in 2012, that predecessor truly came home to roost in the form of the Lodestone network. Instead of that free teleport to Lumbridge, you could now take a free teleport to… <laughs> well, anywhere really. All you had to do was to visit the location once, activate the Lodestone, and now you could teleport straight there for free. Oh, and the 30 minute timer was removed, so you could blitz around the world in a blink of an eye if you wanted to. As you'd expect, this was just as controversial as the original home teleport, if not more, for pretty much the same reasons and sentiments as last time. Now, personally, I enjoy the Lodestone network, and I enjoyed it on release as well. Lodestones were cleverly designed to be just a little out of the way, while the old teleports still took you directly to the heart of the cities. So, with the 10 second animation, you'd lose a lot of time by using Lodestones over teleports. But the main thing, especially for new players, was that teleports had become a little too complex. The fastest ways to get to different places were now buried in all sorts of different teleport items or quest rewards, which weren't too bad if you'd learned them one by one as someone who played as they were individually released, but were a lot to take in if you were starting from scratch. The lodestone system just showed you a map and you picked the general area you wanted to go, which really helped alleviate that issue. More efficient teleports could come later, once the player were actually familiar with the world. But getting back on topic, the Lodestone network definitely dealt a huge blow to letting the game feel big. When you only need to make the trip from Lumbridge to Varrock a single time, it doesn't stick in your mind, compared to everyone who made that journey hundreds of times as a kid. Nowadays, there's a teleport to pretty much anywhere in the game that you need to go to. In fact, if we don't include quest areas and imagine you'd have every teleport available to you, the most obscure spot you'd ever have a reason to visit is a Tetra Pass dig spot in the Elven Lands, which takes a whole 3 minutes and 15 seconds starting from the closest teleport location. And that's the max amount of time needed to get anywhere. A far cry from one that was just a regular walk from Lumbridge to Falador. Though, if we want to include quest areas, then you could technically say the final area of Sliska's Endgame is the most obscure, since that quest is replayable and would take you a solid hour to get through. But besides a title on the second completion, there's not much to do there after that point. 
I hope you enjoyed this little wander into the history of travel in the game and the consequences it carries. In the fast-paced modern world we live in, it's no wonder that a lot of people prefer the current ways of getting anywhere with ease. I do the same. But a lot of people certainly miss that wanderlust of the old days, the good memories of exploration as a kid. I think both opinions are valid here. Everyone just has their own taste. Well, my name is Will Miss It, and I'll see you all later.